Hey, what's going on guys? We're back at it again with another review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the McFarlane Toys Platinum Edition All for One. Now, I couldn't find this MF rep anywhere that I went. Um, I went to a bunch of targets again. I think it's my area, as I mentioned in my Turtles in Disguise 4 pack. My targets usually never have what I'm looking for and... I go pretty much every other day, if not every day, to a Walmart or a Target, so I don't know what it is, but I gotta give a big shout out to my boy Jason, I'm gonna leave a link or uh, his at in the description below, so go follow him on Instagram, he was the reason that I got this, I had the flocked Walmart exclusive Panthor that I was looking to get rid of, he had this figure that he was looking to get rid of, trade, boom, done, we both got what we want. He's an awesome guy, and he posts a lot of cool stuff about toys, and I think you guys should all go give him a follow. Um, I'm going to leave his handle in the description, as I said. But anyway, talking about All for One, I might like this better than the common one. I have the common one here to compare it to uh, later on in the video. I'm not going to try to stand him up now because he doesn't stand very well. We're going to talk about it later on. But yeah, I think this is the superior figure out of the two. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this guy. So McFarlane Toys has been doing the My Hero line for maybe about a year or two now, maybe maybe a little bit longer, probably a year or two, and I'm in love with it. I love his character selection. I wish he would do more, but I mean, I could say that about any toy company, even like Marvel Legends with Hasbro, but I wish he would do more characters. I would love to get a full set of Class 1A. That would be awesome. I didn't get the Toru yet. I'm a little torn about that because I don't feel like that should be $17.99, but whatever. If I want the character in my collection, that seems it's going to be the only route, and I'm going to be worried that by the time I want it, it's going to be sold out. So knowing myself, I'm going to have to go ahead and get it. But I love the line that he's working with. I'm happy that it's not by a more expensive company that takes longer to produce them. I like that it's just... Domestic, simple, walk into your Walmart or Target, see them sitting on the peg and buy them. Um, and I kind of like the idea of Chase figures. As frustrating as it is, I started my collecting experience with Funko Pops. And I don't really get them much anymore. Only certain characters like Captain America. I'll get any version of him. And I like Office and Parks and Recreation. But I don't really get Pops anymore. So I miss that Chase and exclusive experience of hunting. Um, and I think Todd's kind of bringing that back with these figures, um, with his lines of figures anyway, because I just saw today they revealed a, or somebody found a leaked image of a platinum Dr. Fate with a light blue color, and I want that one over the actual one. So, um, I like the idea of a chase figure, and this chase figure, I think, like I said, is better than the, uh, predecessor of the common one. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the head, which is sculpted beautifully, man. That thing looks awesome. Um, I mean, and the, I'll talk about articulation later, but he did a great job with in implementing the way the articulation works on such a weird, obscure helmet like that. So that looks great. The rest of the body is pretty bland. It's just your suited body. Um, this arm, I guess, is a inverted version of this arm because it's exactly the same. The hand's different, though, so I guess if you want to consider this the new sculpt, He's got like this hand, I kind of like to use it like he's like, fixing his collar or whatever. Um, you know, he's got to look all professional before he starts whooping some ass. But yeah, just down to the feet, just the black boots. I love the matte finish of this. I know like with my harsh lights on it, it kind of looks glossy, but it is not. It is very like, I, I guess satin is the best way to put it. Um, not necessarily matte, but it looks great. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, well, before I mention, there's no accessories for this guy. I don't really know what he would come with because his powers kind of are reflected in the common figure. So I think I'm okay with this. And like I said, it's a chase figure. I don't expect much from a chase figure other than being slightly different from the other one, but just enough to want it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the articulation. So for the articulation of this bad boy, we're going to look up that much, which I think is really good for this weird helmet thing. I think he's got a double dumbbell in the neck, which is awesome, which I think is the best way to do a head. Um, head moves downwards that much, but I don't expect more from that. You do get a swivel, and you get you even get some pivot. So I think that's more than acceptable for a head like that. Shoulders are going to move upwards that much, downwards that much, rotate 360, bicep swivel. It's a little cut. I wish he would have 
kind of implemented it a little bit better, but no big deal. Um, double jointed elbows are great. I don't think he'll ever do it, but pinless would be great. Um, I know it's not Todd's thing, but it'd be awesome. Uh, you get a ball hinge at the wrist, so you know if you you can have it going in and out, or you can have it going up and down. You just gotta move the the hinge the way that you want it to. So I like that a lot, especially when there's set deep like this sometimes he'll just break the entire sculpt just to put a ball joint on there like a sneak peek like he did for all might like he just popped the ball in there that's ugly but if you implement it right it could work really nice and i think this is implemented very nicely you get a great joint at the it just seems like a ball at the at the waist and it crunches forward that much that's without legs and he'll go backwards all the way it's like a soft overlay on the top He'll pivot that much, pivot that much, swivel. It clicks, but it, it swivels. Um, the hips are going to move outwards that much, downwards that much. He'll kick forward. Uh, it kind of goes back down, but it kicks pretty far. Backwards. The, now, this is the part that bothers me, and this is with every McFarland figure. There's little to no thigh swivel. I just make a cut, man. You do the bicep swivel. Just make a thigh cut. I mean, it's not the end of the world to me, because once you have them on the shelf, it does look better. I give Todd that, but... It could work. He did it on the Dark Knight's Metal Batman, and it worked great. So, like, I feel like I feel like he could find his way around it. NECA does it where they do similar a similar structure, but they have the peg going into the thigh so that it rotates around it. I don't know why he doesn't do that, but whatever. I'll stop crying about it. Double jointed elbow or knees. That's a knee. Uh, double jointed knees that go upwards that much with like pinless, but it's not going to do it. You're going to go forward that much, upwards that much. Very slight pivot. The, I mean, I get it. The cuffs of the pants kind of hinder the articulation a little bit, but I wish it was a little bit better. But um, And then you get a toe joint that literally goes all the way up. Um, kind of unnecessary, but whatever. So yeah, I think the articulation is pretty good on this. Um, is it perfect? No. Uh, but that, that ball joint at the body is really nice. And I think the head articulation was surprisingly done well, but... The ankles are kind of weak, and the thigh cut would be nice. But let's go ahead and compare him to some other figures, including the common version of him. So here he is next to the common all-for-one. And I have to have him leaning up against my backboard because he doesn't stand. And I know, he, I know they come with the figure stands, but first of all, I don't like to ruin my packaging. And second of all, it doesn't do anything because the hips are so loose that he just tilts over on the, on the stand itself. So it doesn't really help much. Um, and like I said, I think I'm leaning more toward the platinum one. He looks a lot cleaner. That's how I picture all for one. This big arm from a sculpt and an aesthetic standpoint is awesome. But from an articulation standpoint, it doesn't really do much. You know, it kind of just sits there. It swivels, but it pops out really easy. Um, so I'm not the hugest fan of that. And, and he made it a solid piece of plastic, which that's the part that I don't understand. He should have made it hollow. I say he like Todd did it, but they should have made it hollow um, because it's just way too heavy. I mean, the arm is almost the size of his entire body and it looks awesome, but it's not implemented well. But I really think I'm leaning more toward this one. So I'm really happy to have this. Um, but see what I mean? He just, it's just not going to happen. Um, but you can't have all for one without one for all. So I go ahead and bring out my McFarlane Toys All Might and... I've had this complaint with this All Might from the beginning. I think he looks great. Like, I know a lot of people don't like the proportions of him, but I think I think he looks great. I really like the head sculpt. The articulation is nice. But he's just too small. I think I think if I had one complaint about him, I think he should be bigger. And people are saying that his head's tiny. Well, that's the point. He's supposed to have a small head. It's the hero proportions. And I think it works for All Might. But I just wish he was a little bit bigger. Um, That's all. But... I think these two look pretty good together. If anything, All Might could be a little bit bigger, but I think that's overall with the entire line, not just All Might or no, for All For One. But yeah, they look great together. I took a bunch of cool pictures of them fighting. So yeah, I think this looks pretty good. So what are my final thoughts about this figure, you may ask? I'm really happy with it, surprisingly happy with it. I was in the mindset of I'll look for it. If I find it, awesome. If not, so be it. I wasn't paying extra prices for it. But when, like I said, my boy hit me up and said, hey, look, uh, would you want to trade for this? I swooped on it. And I'm very happy with the decision to do so because I wasn't expecting much. But I actually like it better than this one. So 
that's a that's a big plus in my book. When a figure can surprise you more than what you expected it to, that's awesome. So I'm really happy with it. I'm happy with the way that he turned out. I would give him like a a seven out of ten. I think a thigh swivel, better ankle articulation would have been great. Um, and I think this one should have been the chase. Like, that could be just me. I think this one sells better on a peg, so that's probably why they did it. But I think from a collector standpoint, people are going to want him more. Because this is just very cumbersome and ruins a lot of the fun of an action figure. At least for me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people are out there who just really like the giant arm. But for me, it kind of cumbersated things a little bit. Um, I don't even know if that's a word. But, yeah. Very happy with this figure, so I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um, if you want to see more pictures of this guy, go follow my Instagram. I left the link of it in the description below, like the handle. I also am going to leave Jason's in the handle. Please go give him a follow as well. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video if you can. I'm just getting out my YouTube channel started now, so it would mean a lot if I could try to get a little bit of a following. And, you know, I just like to talk to other people. That's all I want to do. So that's going to do it for today's look. I really hope you all enjoyed today, um, today's video. But without that, I will see you all later.